Hi, my name's James Eder and I'm the co-founder of studentbeans.com. I'm here today to share with you my greatest inspiration, brought to you by Orange and Real Business. James Edder set up studentbeans.com when he was just 22, two weeks before graduating from Birmingham University. He knew that being in an unfamiliar city and living on a limited budget was tough. So he designed a website that offered students hundreds of discounts and offers on top brands. He hoped the website would become as much of a staple to university life as the beloved baked beans. While all of his peers started their cushy jobs as accountants and lawyers, James and his brother Michael started pounding the streets of Birmingham, promoting their new company and striking deals with local business owners. After the first six months, half of the Birmingham student population had signed up to studentbeans.com. A year later, it went national. Today, studentbeans.com has more than 250,000 students and 1,000 companies on its books. Turnover this year will hit half a million. James told us about his journey from student to entrepreneur. James, thank you for coming along today. Just to kick off, you started studentbeans.com when you were 22, a couple of weeks before you graduated. Where did you get the idea from? That's right. Well, studentbeans.com is kind of now the UK's leading student offers website, doing kind of promotions and discounts for students across the UK. The idea about it all started kind of three main problems. Um, the first thing is kind of students, predominantly university students, arriving in the city, not really knowing kind of where to go, what to do, where student friendly. Secondly, they always complain they don't really have that much money and always looking for a good deal. And the third thing, kind of problem, was kind of stu companies um, wanting to engage with the student market but not really knowing how and really being able to benefit from the kind of huge student market that they spend around £20 billion on the UK economy. So kind of those three kind of key issues, we thought if we can create a solution to them, which was studentbeans.com and it's since kind of grown from there. So you were a student yourself when you set up the business. How did you fund it? That's right. Well, I was a student and it was, um, you know, it was challenging and on, on graduation kind of a couple of things um, that really helped us out. Um, firstly, we applied for the Prince's Trust, um, so we got a low interest loan from the Prince's Trust, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, but it also, um, kind of partly the Prince's Trust was about having a mentor, which I know maybe we'll speak about a bit later, but for, for, for the funding, um, I also set up the company with my brother and business partner, Michael. Um, and he'd uh, recently also graduated the year before and had set up a successful eBay business, um, selling imported toy toys from China. And um, he had a job with an investment bank, but he decided, you know what, I'm going to kind of develop this idea of student beans um, with James and kind of see where it takes us. Um, and so the funding, that's where the funding came from. You mentioned having a mentor earlier. Who have you turned to for advice along the way? Um, we have been really, really lucky, to be honest, um, because there's kind of a fantastic network of, of people, whether it be kind of professionals or other entrepreneurs that we've met kind of at different networking events and, and such like. But um, I think kind of the biggest challenge is about knowing who to turn to in the right tone and asking the right question, because you don't want to kind of bombard someone that's kind of time's very precious and everyone's kind of most precious asset. And so that was really important. But we've um, one person specifically over the last few years, um, Daniel Nabarro, who's the founder of figleaves.com, um, kind of the world's leading retail uh, store for lingerie. And he came when well, we were kind of mentoring us more informally, kind of every six months or so, we'd kind of have a burning issue or question and meet up with him. Um, and then it turned to kind of, do we want to put a board in place and, and kind of a non-executive director position? And, and we decided and we kind of offered him the position and he accepted kind of mid last year. Uh, which has been fantastic, so on a more formal basis and helping us kind of with management structure um, and strategic planning and really kind of focusing and helping us um, grow the business. But then more ad hoc, kind of everyone from kind of marketing, whether it be lawyers, I mean, the, the Prince's Trust as well provided a fantastic mentor service. So once a month I'd meet up with someone uh, from a law firm up in Birmingham. And it was just fantastic just to take stock and to feedback and so things didn't kind of get pushed under the carpet. And I think you know, the statistics nine in 10 businesses fail and, and why is that? And I think one of the reasons is that accountability and you know, you're just left to your own devices and to kind of make your idea happen. Um, but a mentor has been really, really fantastic. So you've had lots of help and advice along the way. What would you say has been your single biggest challenge in setting up studentbeans.com? The single biggest challenge, I think, it, it was at the beginning and it was about kind of building a brand and building trust. 
Um, I just remember kind of in between graduation, my graduation ceremony is kind of middle, beginning of July, and we were so driven and passionate about kind of creating this website and concept, but we had no students, so no visitors to the site, just a landing page. Um, and, you know, no companies had, had signed up with us yet, but it was just this pure, like, vision and drive saying, this is going to launch in September, and you've got to get involved. And door-to-door -door knocking and kind of going, doing, like, business breakfast networking at 6.30 in the morning and then going door to door and it was about kind of fitting into my timetable and going right this company said go back at 10 o'clock and this company said meet them at two o'clock and so in between all of those kind of rough meetings I then kind of again just go door to door and and people screamed like I got screamed at in some shops and services and and when we were even just offering you know a, a free trial for a few months or you know all different ways innovative ways to try and get people just to sign up, just to start with us. Um, and then we launched in, in Birmingham with over 200 companies signed up with us um, on our first day. And, and then within six months, we had over half the population in Birmingham students registered with us. You're now 25, yeah. a great role model for young entrepreneurs. Um, what are you doing to inspire the next generation? Entrepreneurs. We tried to be honest and, and do as much as we can. I mean, we're involved. Um, I'm an ambassador for the Make Your Mark campaign, um, and I do quite a lot of talks um, and public speaking. And I'm involved, kind of the University of Birmingham, I'm kind of a guest lecturer there. Um, and I love talking to kind of younger kids and, and to um, to help inspire and to help make them think. You know, it is possible. And I volunteered also for, for Young Enterprise, which was really. Um, really interesting day and you kind of go to a school and you ask kind of these students kind of 15, 16 year olds, you know, what are you going to do after school and then I'm going to go, yeah, go to university and then what are you going to do after university? You're going to get a job and, and then I'm like, well, how about being an entrepreneur? How about setting up your own idea? And you can see in the room kind of the excitement and kind of the feedback and, it, and it's really, really fun. Um, and someone that really inspired me as well um, is a guy called David Taylor. I'm not sure if you've heard of him, but he's uh, a guy also known as the Naked Leader and has written a book called The Naked Leader. And what's fantastic is he just goes, you know, there's all this business hype and business books, which are all great in different ways. Um, but if you just take all the kind of jargon out of it, what, what is it? Um, and and the, the core of it, kind of this key statement, imagine if you couldn't fail. And um, I was at a conference where he was speaking and um, I'd read his book previously, but he was standing in this conference and there were like 300 people or so. And as he said those words, I was thinking I could apply for a job and I could do this. But imagine if studentbeans.com as a concept couldn't fail. Imagine if it was all across the country and students could use the service and, and it would help students save money and there'd be this win-win environment. Companies would benefit and students would benefit. And what would that look like? And um, you know, imagine if you couldn't fail. And that's exactly what I imagined. I imagined you know, what we've got today, which, which is a national-based website helping you know, tens of thousands of students every month save money um, and enjoy more and get more out of their university experience. So I can't emphasize enough the kind of the power of, of, of thinking and kind of having this vision and thinking about you know, removing this kind of fear of failure if you just give it a go and, and things happen. Well, best of luck with creating a top brand and thank you for speaking to Real Business today. Thank you very much.